What's up everybody, I'm Cindy Goodman and in today's Daily Fix, what's the deal with PS5 DualSense Drift, an EA patent that I can get behind and we learn a bit about Lois Lane. Roll the thing! Last week, Sony got served their first class action lawsuit regarding DualSense controller drift. And that got us wondering, how did we get here? Why is controller drift such a persistent issue with a controller that's been available to the public for only four months? Well, we weren't the only ones wondering, and thanks to iFixit, we now have a better idea of the potential causes for the drifting issues that some PS5 owners have been experiencing. The full video is available on iFixit's YouTube channel, and it explains how the DualSense uses, quote, off-the-shelf joystick hardware with a long history of predictable, preventable issues. The joysticks in question are manufactured by a company called Alps and have been used by other controllers like PS4's DualShock 4, the Xbox One and Xbox One Elite controller, and the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. But iFixit mentions that Alps, quote, probably aren't the villain of the story and most likely isn't to blame for these drift issues. The actual model used in the DualSense controller, RKJXV, has an operating life of 2 million cycles, and iFixit mentions that this number can vary quite a bit based on how often you play games and what types of games you play. And that sounds like a lot, but when you remember that a cycle is simply moving the joystick and think about how often you do that while playing, the lifespan of these aren't actually that long. iFixit did some back of the napkin math based on their employees called duty gameplay, and the lifespan clocks in at just over 400 hours of game time. And for COD players like myself, 400 hours will go by in a flash. The main cause of controller drift seems to be related to what are called potentiometers. If you picture the joystick mechanism as a little box with the piece that's inside of the joystick knob sticking up out of the box, the potentiometers sit on the outside of the box and each joystick has two that sit perpendicular to each other. The potentiometers are critical to your controller working correctly because they allow the controller to know where and how you're telling it to move. When these wear down too much, that's when controller drift could start. Another potential issue could come into play with the joystick itself. Its neutral position is found by a spring, and if that spring becomes overstretched and the new neutral position is no longer centered, then the controller thinks you're moving it. And finally, another potential cause is contaminants and imperfections like plastic dust or food and drinks. So be very careful when you're eating your Doritos and sipping on Mountain Dew because that cheesy dust could get in there, which can alter the voltage and cause incorrect readings in the terminals. I found this video super interesting because I never really thought about how the inside of my controller communicates with my console. So if you want to learn more, definitely, definitely check out iFixit's video on this for the full breakdown, both figuratively and literally. With that said, all of these are issues that sound like they happen with wear and tear over time. So we learned the lifespan of the joysticks might not be as long as you would think, but I'm still confused about how people are having PS5 controller drift issues right out of the box. How? Why? Other times during my gaming experiences that I yell both how, why, are often because I'm really excited about buying a game and I do so digitally, then have to wait what feels like 15 hours to download said game before I can actually play it. And EA seems to be trying to find a way to fix this. Spotted by Game Rant, EA has filed a patent with the United States Patent and Trademark Office on tech that would let players stream and play full games before they've been downloaded. The plan involves the creation of a dynamic video game client that provides a stream of the game to players from a remote simulation engine, if you do decide to utilize this feature. According to the patent, the intent of this tech would be, quote, provide users with the ability to begin playing games quickly on a huge range of devices. If you're thinking this sounds similar to other cloud-based services like Google Stadia, you're right. The system the patent outlines means that you could request to play a game you own without it being downloaded on your local system. It's not totally clear though if you download the game in the background during this process, but the patent does imply that this is the problem EA is trying to solve. Remember, just because a patent is filed doesn't necessarily mean it'll be something EA utilizes. And if this does become a thing, you'll probably still need to have a decent internet connection in order to manage the game stream. But it means that players could jump into a game as soon as they buy it instead of waiting in agony for the download. I like it. You ever wonder what Superman and Lois Lane got up to after the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths? Well, good news! All will be answered when Superman and Lois drops tomorrow, Tuesday, February 23rd, but today we'll be dishing out a taste of what's to come right now, presented by the CW's Superman and Lois. 
After losing their jobs at the Daily Planet, Clark Kent and Lois Lane have settled back into Kent's hometown of Smallville to do the whole family thing, you know, juggling a new house, twin teenage sons, and occasionally saving the planet. Normal stuff. Sure, Superman's still got a career being Superman, but what about Lois? The transition from an intrepid reporter to farmer's wife isn't exactly something that comes easy. Add on to that, keeping her husband super secret from their twin boys while keeping an eye on potential love triangle with Clark's old flame, Lana Lang, it's a lot for even Lois Lane to manage. So what's she going to do? All will be answered in the two hour premiere of Superman and Lois on The CW, Tuesday, February 23rd, starting at 8, 7 central. And as Daily Fix, I'm Cindy Goodman, and I hope your day is as awesome as you are. Now that you're all caught up on the news, check out our latest episode of Rainbow Six Siege, no, of IGN on the Six, our Rainbow Six Siege show, where we learn more about Crimson Heist and the game's newest operator. Download the IGN app on all your mobile devices, subscribe to the Daily Fix on Snapchat, and for all things everything else, IGN.com. The world will always need Superman, but right now this family needs you more.